momentum is growing <clears throat> towards investing in America's crumbling infrastructure. But for half of a century, America has been spinning its wheels by failing to meet the challenge of investing in infrastructure. The crumbling roads and bridges year after year, example after disturbing example, paint a picture of America falling apart and falling way behind. Once the finest in the world, America's infrastructure has instead become a visible symbol of our challenges of governance. In the coming months, the American Society of Civil Engineers will issue its updated scorecard on American infrastructure. The scorecard is sure to again document our lack of progress in meeting perhaps the most visible challenge that government faces, funding and financing the infrastructure. Um, however, we are optimistic that the landscape is shifting, but there is no issue on Capitol Hill with as much unity and cooperation than exists than exist for infrastructure. Um, business and labor, truckers and bicyclists, and transit agencies and highway users are all united on improving America's infrastructure. But these diverse interests have successfully created consensus within the halls of Congress, too, about the need to renew and rebuild America. That rebuilding um, and investing in our nation's roadways would provide a tangible improvement in the daily lives of, of most Americans and for trucking for, and for truckers alone. And, a reduced, and, and that a reduced congestion would improve um, productivity safety, and, safe, and safety and it would help the environment by eliminating up to 67 million tons of CO2 annually that's caused by truck that by trucks sitting in traffic. But as clear as the benefits are, the decades-long stricken point has been how to pay for it. Despite the fact that investments in infrastructure have a high economic multiplier, you put millions you put millions of people to work at family wage at family wage jobs, improve in, uh, opportunity and make America more competitive, and raising revenue has been a stumbling block for Republicans and Democrats alike. But that equation is, is going to change. The pandemic has demonstrated the Im Im imperative of substantial investments and programs that stabilize their communities and create jobs and restore families from once-in-a-century economic damage. Several trillion dollars have been approved as an important down payment toward ec ec um, the economy recovery. And, a a and as the next step, Congress must provide the squatter or president with the funds necessary for a comprehensive infrastructure investment, and we all believe that all options should be on the table. Um, tra um, transitioning to um, what they call an equitable modern solution for funding, the infrastructure within the next decade is essential, and this long-term vision will ensure that the United States remains an economic leader for the foreseeable future, but we should look to consider a pricing program based on road use um, paid for by people who have the capacity and the incentive to make the investments at the same time, we may contemplate a slightly lower cost for rural and small town America, but while people may pay, while people pay more for the traffic congestion where where it is caused, with the amount of di of division in our country and and the witness and, and and it has witnessed in recent months, the infrastructure investment may be the one issue that can help unify our nation with the promise of better roads, less congestion, and job creation reaching every corner of America. But we may have the, we may have the experience, but we have the coalition and we have the policies. We only need Congress to provide the political courage to re to reinvest in America for decades to come.